and five. Yeah, some man. Other things to discuss, shall we? It's time for Fan Five, brought to you by Builders and Remodelers. Hey, thanks, Builders and Remodelers. Uh, ben, you weren't here earlier when we talked about uh, Caitlin Clark. Not only is she getting an eight-figure deal from Nike, she also had a really weird question from Greg Doyle. A press conference that went viral because uh, she was up there getting introduced as a member of the Indiana Fever. And then Greg Doyle got all weird and creepy. Maybe you saw it. Right? I, did not, like I did not see it. I just heard you guys describe it, um, it with great detail. Zach, maybe we can uh, pull up that audio. By the way, uh, we can get Parker in on this hey, as well. Uh, uh, Greg Doyle, Indy Star. Here it is. Real quick. Oh, let me do this. You like you like that? I like that you're here. I like yeah, that you're here. I do that at my family after every game, so. Okay, well, let's cool. start doing it to me, and we'll be able to get along just fine. So, question is, you... You know, people think the end of it's cringe, where he says, uh, start doing that to me, and we'll get along just fine. I still think a, an adult man doing the heart symbol to a 22-year-old girl is bizarre. The creepiest part is... What a weirdo. I like that you're here. I like that you're That's here. That's Buffalo Bill-like. Uh, Parker Fox of the Golden Gopher basketball team joins. Hi, uh, Parker. I just wanted to do this to you, if you don't yeah. mind. I like the, uh, I like like the heart there a little bit. Actually, Dawson Garcia showed that video to me yesterday in the locker room. It was a little... A little creepy. Creepy, right? Yeah, a little bit. Nice to meet you, by the way. I wasn't yeah. here the first time you were in, but uh, I heard rave reviews about your first appearance on the show, like, what, five months ago, whenever you awesome. were on. We're back, we're better. Right on, man. Good to I see you. I love it. Yeah, yeah. See you. Ben, Good were to meet you here? Did you meet Parker yet or not? No. Parker, no, Ben not. Lieber, Ben Lieber. Yeah. yeah. Good to meet you. Parker Fox. Awesome. There we go. Right on. Yeah, um, that's just creepy and cringy. Yeah, it's, Greg's a, that's a weird bit. Well, apparently, if you kind of scroll some of the comments, too, he's kind of a creepy dude in the, not creepy, but just kind of. One of these guys in the indie market that's always doing just ridiculous things and always thinking that he's funnier than what he is. So mm. it, it seems like it's on par if you follow him and know him. I think on the outside looking in, if this is my first introduction to him, I'd be like, all right, I don't know if it's creepy. It's just a guy, that's, he's a tryhard. Like, oh, you're just trying way too hard. Like, swing and a miss. Mm. I don't think you need to get canceled. I don't think that it's like... I don't think it's like super, super weird, but yeah, how about this? But I think he's so aware that he's on the brink of getting canceled that 13 hours ago, he tweeted today in my uniquely oafish way while welcoming Caitlin Clark to Indy, I formed my hands into her signature heart. My comment afterward was clumsy and awkward. I sincerely apologize. Please know my heart literally and figuratively was well-intentioned. I will do better. Well, 10 hours ago, he posted a column and his headline on Twitter to link to the story just says, Caitlin Clark, I'm so sorry. Today I was part of the problem. Yeah, so so I saw that that second apology. And I think it's interesting that, and maybe, I don't know, I guess I have I don't follow Caitlin on X, but like I'm assuming she's on X. She he doesn't he doesn't tag her at all, doesn't do at Caitlin Clark, just puts her name. I'm like, well, that's kind of interesting. Like, wouldn't you just like direct directly yeah she's on caitlin clark 22 three hundred and thirty thousand people that follow why wouldn't you if you are sincere about what you're doing why don't you just tag her so you may you at least know she's gonna see it and her representatives will see it like that's like i think a more of a true public apology but they can't even do that right yeah it was weird he just as we talked about this morning Patrick Royce, he's not going to do that to Parker Fox in a press conference. Oh, my you know? God. I would Maybe pay to did. see that. Right. Yeah, that well, be... Parker over here. Uh, right. I'm just happy you're here. Uh, that's that's a really good Royce. I'm happy. But, like, uh, you're I just, not. I just love that you're here. Okay, now it's getting weird. <laughs> but you, it's just weird. Like I'm working on that. That was really It's good. a little bit just like uh, my Brian Johnson from ACDC just holding one note. Yeah, it's and very not saying good, Parker's name. That might be worse than the heart. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. Your thoughts. You're a college athlete. I don't know. We talked about the locker room. I like I think so often with the media it's like they try to relate, you know, yeah. to to you and they want to they want to kind of you get that inside kind of side to you so they have that relationship with you, but Sometimes when it's a guy in that position, it's like, dude, you're kind of just doing a little too much, and correct, uh, and stay away from that. I mean, right. in in a way, it's a it's like these local broadcasters and and the guys that are on the sports beat. Let's just say, for in this situation, we're talking about Indiana in in Indianapolis. You get introduced to whether it's the Colts' first round draft pick that's coming up, Caitlin Clark, whatever it is. You're sort of starting a relationship, like you're dating. 
a little bit. And for him to come out on date one and act like that. I love like, you. Yeah. Like, yeah. I love you, Kayla. Yeah, right. It's like, you, I you're love never. I that you're here. Right. You're never get. Uh. She's never going to trust him ever again. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if he thinks that this is his way of, like, you know, little bro banter and like, sure. hey, we're just kind of like hanging out. We're buds, you know, and you can trust me and I'm just kind of a cool guy. She doesn't know here. who you are. She, she doesn't know who you are. And that's the other thing. It's like, all right, Parker, right now you're on our show, right? Mm-hmm. This is our turf. We're glad to have you here, right? But if if Caitlin Clark had come into this show, the Power Trip Morning Show, that's kind of the point. It's let's be friendly. Let's all get to know each other, right? It's yeah. it's our moment. You're on our show. This is our turf, but we're super pumped that you're here. That press conference is her moment. It's not Greg's chance to go. No. I'm uh, Caitlin and I need to bond right. No, it's not your moment at all. You can meet her over the next handful of years while you're covering the fever. This is her yeah, moment. Slow play it a little bit. How yeah, about relax. just ask her questions? This should have nothing to do with Greg Doyle. And now, of course, the last 24 hours it is. Paul, your hands up. Now, on the flip side, how much money do we have to give Zach or if the Vikings draft J.J. McCarthy. Oh, God, I would love that. Just do the, the hard cut. Oh, my God. Go, I'm well, glad that, you're that's here. Your, that is your best yeah! idea. Yeah, cool. That might be your one right. idea for the year. Right, like, you no, know, like it's on NFL Network, and Zach just goes, I'm glad, I'm glad you're, you're here. here. And just the heart yeah. hands the yeah. whole Genius. time. I'm glad you're what? Here. here. Oh. oh. And then if, if if J.J. says, do you have a question, he doesn't even have to say yes. I love yes you. Or, I love you. <laughs> yeah. I'm just glad you're here. So okay, that so that's your one good, good idea for the year. Now, if he, they don't draft J.J. McCarthy, though, then you don't have a good idea yet. That's okay. Oh. Then you have eight months to come Fine up with, with a good that. idea for I'll the year. I'll come up with another one. Will you? By Christmas. <laughs> then you were going to say <laughs> well, something. Well, I was just going to try to bring this back to Parker. And the, the fact that, you know, I think in, in basketball, you guys are you guys are in the spotlight from such a young age. At what point in time did you, obviously, even just sitting here for just five minutes, I can tell you're very comfortable in front of a microphone and all this this whole medium. But, like, when did you feel comfortable getting being in front of the camera, talking to media? Did you have training? Did you guys have ongoing training with the Gophers? How is that all handled? How did it work for you? Yeah, I mean, I think it's different for everybody. You know, I think for me, I'm kind of an outgoing guy that, that enjoys um, this kind of stuff. I think this is, like, the most fun because it's, like, just sitting around with a bunch of guys talking sports and having fun. Um, and then when it comes to, like, media, you know, they're asking you questions, and that's easy for me. But it doesn't come easy for everybody, which is weird to me because I think – you know, you're talking about your game. You're talking about yourself. Like this should be, this should come easy. You know, but but some guys it doesn't. Um, I never had any specific training or anything like that. I think it's just like it's something that I enjoy. I've always enjoyed talking. I always enjoyed dialogue. Um, this is basically the same thing as sitting around on the couch at night and just you know having a conversation about the latest you know news. Mm-hmm. But you know, you're just doing it to a microphone. So I think it's just something that I've always enjoyed. Do you ever have an awkward line of questioning? I'm not saying somebody made a pass at you. Or made uh, hand gestures, but did you ever have somebody try to put you in the corner or some kind of awkward, uh, you know, question yeah. or two? Usually it comes from, like, a, an opposite team media member for the most point, you know, whether they, like, saw something during the game that they didn't like or maybe they saw something on your Twitter that they didn't like. And they, it, it's, I would say it's more on, like, Twitter when you, when you get somebody to tweet at you than... I think some people are kind of sometimes afraid to actually ask in person, uh, and then they'll mm. go and tweet it after mm. the interview or something like that. So uh, nothing too awkward. Um, I think other guys have had more awkward situations, but um, I don't know. I just try to, like, if there's something awkward, just divert it and, you know, the classic media PR yeah. response. Yeah, sure. Just, yeah. You know. All right, well, let's do Fan 5 because one thing that we haven't really discussed at all is go for basketball-related, shall we? Uh, you already hit it, right? Yes. Am I forgetting? That was yes. like five minutes ago. That's what it was when he was walking it was, in. Uh, nine minutes ago. Nine minutes ago. <laughs> uh, time flies when you're having fun. Go for basketball. Got a transfer. Now, are you allowed to talk about this stuff or not? I don't know how this works. Um, can you comment on the new player, or do you I, have to stay? Uh, I think quiet? I can. I think I can say that um, we recruited him. Okay, I don't know if I want. I don't want to put you in a bad spot. <laughs> anyway, the uh, the uh, the Gopher basketball team got Frank Mitchell from uh, Canisius, six eight two forty. Um, That's a huge bitch. Uh, 12.1 points a game, 11.6 rebounds a game. That's fourth in the country. Obviously, uh, Pharrell Payne leaving with the portal. Um, So, man, if uh, if this is the case and you can comment on it, I don't know if you can. On paper, that's a pretty big spot to fill, a double-double machine, this guy, Frank Mitchell. Yeah, I mean, Pharrell is a a guy that, does a lot of things for us. He's huge, obviously, as well. So um, you need to replace size in the Big Ten, and 
um, I think is what I can say is that we're recruiting the kids. So, yeah. Got it. Well said. Well <laughs> Thanks, said. Do you, guys, uh, do you guys talk portal at all? As a team? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, especially now, like three years ago, no. But now it's like it's all we – it's all the conversation. And it's more honestly about the money too. The money side of it is how much you think this guy's getting, how much you think – and we're a pretty – we're a pretty close group, you know, under our table, and, and we, you know, we're not afraid to tell each other and, you know, discuss it with each other just because we're an open, close group. But, um, you know, when you talk about a new kid coming in, it's like you're not really comfortable with him yet, so it's a little weird to be sure. like, how much money did you get? You know? But did so, you, like, did you have any sense that Pharrell was thinking about going? Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah, I think, um, you know, that whole sophomore class, Pharrell, Braden, and Josh, we kind of – we kind of knew towards the end of the year that, you know, they, they definitely were thinking about it. And then, um, you know, obviously some things take you blindsided when they all just kind of up and do it. But um, it's definitely something that you can sense. Um, I think for me, too, as, as, you know, one of the leaders and captains, it's like, you know, you try to rein it in for the last, you know, couple of weeks. But um, sometimes guys have their mind made up and, it's sure. you know, you got to hope that they're doing what's best for them. I'm not trying to compare the uh, the Gophers to the national champion Connecticut uh, Huskies, but I heard Dan Hurley on with um, with Dan Patrick. Yeah. And he basically said he had to sell the entire team. Like, look, I know the portal's out there. I know there's NIL money out there. I don't even care if you guys leave, but we have a chance to run this back and go back to back for the first time. You know, no one's done it since Florida almost, what, 15, 16, 17 years ago. Yeah. So if you can just swallow your pride for a year, we can really do this again and be historic. And he said they got everybody on the same page and they did it. Does it suck a little bit that like you have the Izzos of the world saying, man, this gopher team, if they can stay together, they got some experience, they got depth, they got some skills, they got some NBA talents, right? Like Cam Christie, you got some people here that are legit. Mm -hmm. They just got to stay together. And then as soon as the season ends, you have three or four of you hit the portal and leave and you're like, Oh man, why can't they just keep this team together? It's frustrating. Yeah, no, you're right. And I think it's, it's cool when Tom Izzo says it, but ultimately when you truly believe it and then it happens, it, it you know, it sucks even more. So um, yeah, we definitely were in a spot where like, Hey man, like I, I try to relay that message. Like, you know, yeah, we, you know, we lost Michigan state in the first round of the big 10 tournament, but we bring everybody back. Uh, we get a couple kids in, we, we find a, a transfer here or there. Like there's no reason why we're not on top of this conference, especially with the way things move nowadays. So um, I tried to relay that message as much as I could. That was kind of, you know, Ben's main message is, hey, let's 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 run this thing back. But, um, you know, guys, guys make their own personal decisions and, you know, they're, they're still family. So you hope that they uh, they make the right ones, you know. So I've, well said. I've never really like dove into the whole transfer portal process. And how. How does it actually work these days? Because I feel like the NCAA has just kind of lost control of this thing. Oh, yeah. If if you're if you're <laughs> if so if you are a player and you're thinking, oh, okay, I I don't know, maybe I should just go elsewhere and I need to transfer. Is it as easy as walking into I don't know the compliance office or whatever and say like, yep, I want to transfer. Here's my application, and you just go is it just that open yeah there's not even an application you just go into compliance and say put me in the transfer portal you don't even have to tell your coach which is the the craziest thing and i think that's more of like a respect thing and i think all of the guys on our team obviously did that but um yeah you can just walk up to compliance and say hey put me in the transfer portal and then you'll get an email because i did it when i was leaving uh, northern state and uh you'll get an email about an hour later and then your phone starts to ring and it's you know random numbers calling you and schools calling you and but it's yeah it's so it, re so it really is just an open market yeah. free agency it's so literally yeah free agency can, wow. you, can you explain the timeline because this is something that dan patrick and dan hurley were talking about mm -hmm. as well hurley compared it to the draft mm -hmm. and the way that the, the the analogy he was trying to use is that the longer you stay in the tournament other teams that are dropping off those are the players that enter the portal so it's almost like the teams that are out of the tournament get the first crack at the available players. Is that no? You're exactly right. Close yeah. as well. You know, you're exactly right. But now with this NIL money, a lot of the teams that are out early probably don't have the same NIL budget as the teams that are still competing. So yeah, you can start recruiting kids, but if it's like a if it's like a big time name, um, then it's it's going to be hard to recruit him with your NIL budget compared to now Arkansas has got a $6 million NIL budget or whatever it is. So, um, yeah, you're right. And if teams are playing, like, I think that kid still can enter the portal if he's on a, if he's on a team, but you're probably not because you're making a, you know, a championship run. You're like, maybe I got a chance to win a championship here. So right. can I, can I follow up real quick on the NIL? Cause again, it's cloudy to me and how it all works. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you as an individual player get a a check from the collective? Is it put into your student account? Is it paid weekly, biweekly, monthly? Like 
when you secure an NIL deal, who are you talking to? How does the payments get made? And how ultimately is the money transferred back and forth? Yeah, obviously I can, you know, I could do an NIL deal with Let's say Al's breakfast. Is That'd sauce. be great. That yeah. would, I was there. I was oh. there. <laughs> oh. I was there yesterday morning, man. If I knew you could get money in college, I would have gone to college. If you could get money, <laughs> who from was going to give breakfast. you money? Al's go breakfast. To, you got to do something, though. Yeah, no, well, that's overrated. Doing things is overrated. You're not getting nil money for playing MLB the show. Oh, but I'm good at it. Yeah. You, okay. Anyway, sorry. Anyway, well, you were saying. I'm talking. No, one. but I mean, um, they, like Al's can say, "Hey, we'll give you, uh, let's say, a thousand dollars to do an Instagram post." and a TikTok once a month or something like that. That's like your NIL deal, you with Al's. There's no middleman. Now you got collectives. You got, um, for us, Dinky Town Athletes, and um, they raise all their money and kind of work with coach and say, hey, how much does it take to get Dustin Garcia back? How much does it take to get Elijah Hawkins back, Mike Mitchell, Parker Fox, whatever it may be? And they can work with you, and then um, once you kind of solve a number that, that you like, um, each school does it differently probably, but at the U we do um, – 50% is paid out right away, and then there's basically a payment plan through the rest of the year. I think it's a smart way to do it because, um, one, yeah, you get to see that money. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, that's real. And then also it's, you know, a 19-year-old sees whatever it is, $100,000. They're probably going to, you know, start spending a little bit. So it's smart to kind of do that little payment plan throughout the throughout the season. Um, and, is it and, just during the season? Because I guess if you transfer, then it's just gone. So it's only paid out during the season. Yeah, that's, that's what for yeah. ours was at least, yeah. So we'll have like, you know an April deal, um, and then get that money. And then when the season starts, da, 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 you go down the line. So, but if you, but if you as an individual walked into Al's and Al's is like, Hey man, yeah. we want to do a deal separately. That's completely separate and on your own. You don't have to report that or go to. No. Yeah. You just have to make sure compliance is, is cool. It's, right. There's like some rules. Like you can't do a deal with like, you know, FanDuel or DraftKings or whatever, right. whatever it is. Right. You, know, you can't do gambling, can't do alcohol. And now, you know, with cannabis being legal, sure. you can't, sure. can't do that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, about strip clubs. I don't know. I don't know about strip clubs. <laughs> Sauce, Sauce right you would have wanted that out. nil deal to deja vu deja back in the day. Hell yeah! I mean, I'm just thinking about going to Al's breakfast. I wasn't really listening. That's, That's how you know you're getting older. But yeah. you just want. Breakfast. I'd rather go to Al's breakfast. 100 oh, percent. Same. Not even strip close. Strip clubs are overrated. 100 percent. It's a waste of time and Give money. Give me breakfast. Yeah. I want a waffle. Yeah, I'm not doing that. What is your Al's order? Uh, I get the uh, I get one blueberry pancake because it's elite. Oh, it's the best time. pancake. Even Gavin Case, on who I ripped one time, said it's the maybe the best item in no, the it state. Is. It's that You're good. Right. Uh, I get the uh, the spike with two eggs and garlic and all that, mm -hmm. and then I get some toast and a cup of coffee. Augusto, sweetheart, save some room for later. Elite. Jesus, you go hard. Oh, I do. I go hard in the paint, man. You yeah, you look out if I'm ever in there with you. I'm not going to out-rebound you for a stool. Hey, as long as I get the one at the end where there's a little extra leg yeah. room, oh, that's, yeah. that's, yeah. My, uh, that's my go-to. But, no, yeah, you can do you can do whatever. And um, that's the best way to do it, right? So you can, if you feel confident enough to, you know, look at contracts and, you know, um, bargain with somebody about how much you should make off of TikTok or whatever. And now guys have agents too, where it's like, you know, that they can help them out. Yeah. But now your agent's taking usually 20% yeah, twenty percent market, yeah, yeah. which is... Yeah. Way too high. I'll do so. it for fifteen. I'll yeah, be your agent for fifteen. It's, cra it's crazy, but that's that's I'll been sort of a pancakes. standard standard marketing commission is twenty yeah. percent. It's just too high. It's like it's you know, way it's, too high, especially with guys like myself. Now there's some elite guys where it's like, yeah, you probably need like Caitlin Clark needed an agent. You know, Angel Reese, those kind of those kind of people need an agent. But for me, when it's I'm dealing with local, you know, little deals here and there, why give somebody twenty percent? You know, I think and, yeah. our, and our coaches pay, our coaches push for that too. Where it's like, dude, you're the one that's making this. Why? I give 20% yeah. to somebody else. So, yep. All right, more with Parker Fox after this, more with Ben Lieber after this. In about 10 minutes, we'll talk to Mike Inori, assistant coach of the Minnesota Timberwolves. Game one of the Suns-Wolves series, Saturday, 2.30, right here on The Fan. Uh, but uh, more with Parker and Ben after this on The Fan. The Fan. For more information about contests on this station, go to kfan.com slash rules. The free iHeartRadio app has over 100 commercial-free stations waiting for you to explore right now, like Deep Cuts. Featuring deep album tracks from iconic artists like The Beat. The 
iHeartRadio. Free never sounded so good. True Green is the easiest and most affordable way to get a beautiful lawn. All you have to do is water and mow. And to top it off, when you sign up for an annual plan by April 20th, you get one application free. Call or visit TrueGreen.com today. Restrictions apply. Zero Res spells the same forward and backwards. It's Z-E-R-O. R-E-Z. If you need your carpets cleaned, you call Zero Res. 952 Zero Res. If you need your upholstery or tile cleaned, you can call Zero Res. Area rugs or your air duct system, Zero Res does all of that. And they do it the right way, the Zero Res way. They don't use harsh chemicals or shampoos. So if you are doing spring cleaning right now, and most of us should be or probably are, uh, make sure they're a part of your plan. Get the professionals at Zero Res to come out there and clean your carpets at your home, your cabin, your business. If you mentioned KFN, three rooms of carpet starting at just one twenty nine, which is a fantastic deal. And not or, it's and. And you can knock seventy five dollars off your air deck system cleaning. So if you have allergies or somebody in your home has allergies, uh, and you want to be breathing clean air, not just this spring but uh, throughout the year, make sure you get your air deck system clean from time to time. They'll knock seventy five dollars off if you mention KFN. Or ask for the KFAN special. So again, two ways to get a hold of them. Call 952-ZERO-RES. Or right now, even easier, go online at ZeroResMinnesota.com. April showers bring wet basements. Standard Water Control is the waterproofing foundation repair and sump pump expert since 1977. Installation, service, and repair for all wet basement issues. Peace of mind starting at just $199. Visit StandardWater.com for details. StandardWater.com. Hey, it's Corey Cove for Ovo LASIK and Lens. And look, I've had LASIK and I'm thrilled with my results. But what if LASIK isn't the best option for you? Well, there's even more at Ovo. Maybe you or someone you know, maybe a parent, is over 50 and struggling with reading glasses. Well, Ovo has a solution called Restorative Lens Exchange, or RLE. Now, the LASIK consultation has always been free. It is. But for a limited time, Ovo is waiving the $300 consultation fee for Restorative Lens Exchange. But you'll also get $500 off your LASIK or RLE procedure. Plus, 24 months interest-free financing. So if you're like me and we're struggling with glasses, contacts, or reading glasses, well then call Ovo LASIK and Lens for your free consultation to find out if LASIK or RLE is right for you. And don't forget, Ovo LASIK and Lens has the legends of LASIK, Dr. Lobanoff and Dr. Whiting, along with over 1,600 five-star Google reviews and a best price guarantee. So you really can't get better than vision correction at Ovo LASIK and Lens. Find them online at OvoEye.com. That's O-V-O-E-Y-E dot com. If you're in a pinch, call Finch Home Solutions, your local electrical home service specialists. Made to shine. Real stories from Shane Company customers. I couldn't believe all the colors of stones you could choose from to create an engagement ring at Shane Company. I didn't even know there were like 16 colors of sapphires. And they had so many diamond shapes. I just didn't know what to get. They asked me where we met. And I told them we fell in love in the Caribbean. They showed me their light blue aquamarine. And I was like, that's it. The color of the sea. It was perfect for her ring. Exquisite diamonds and vibrant gemstones in a rainbow of colors. Shane Company. Fine jewelry since 1929. Meat sauce here for my friends at Window Nation and WindowNation.com. As the spring air rolls in and it's getting nicer out, you maybe on a Sunday morning have a cup of coffee and you open your windows. If you try and open those windows and they don't open or, they, or they're cracked or with all the rain we got, they're moldy or they're leaking, replace them immediately. Let's say you bought a house this year because it's the time to buy houses and maybe you bought a fixer-upper and the first thing on your list is new windows. Contact my friends at Window Nation, WindowNation.com today. You get two free windows with every two you buy, plus two years, no pay, uh, no interest, no payments, no nothing. That's the best deal of all time from Window Nation and WindowNation.com. I love Window Nation. They are awesome at what they do. Every window they install goes through a ton of inspections. They are the best. They can get most jobs done in a day. That's how good they are at what they do. Window Nation, windownation.com. You get two free windows of every two you buy. You pay no interest for two full years. Windownation.com. Call 866-90-NATION. Windownation.com. Buy it. You're listening live to The Power Trip on iHeartRadio and FM 100.3 KFAN. The Fan. Join us tomorrow for a pre-draft Friday football feast. This week at Buffalo Wild Wings in Savage. Doors open at 8 a.m. ahead of a live 9 to noon broadcast with PA and Charch. Join us for football wings and prizes. Find out more info at KFN.com keyword calendar. 
All right, in like a minute and a half, we're going to call Mike Inori, assistant uh, coach of the Minnesota Timberwolves, ask him about the Suns uh, Wolves series. But the, before that, Ben Lieber is still here. Ben, we got like 15 minutes with you. Uh, Parker Fox is here of the Gopher basketball team. Good to meet you, dude. Uh, and you're coming back. I am. You're coming yeah. back. I'm going to be an eighth year senior next year. Eighth year senior. That's you awesome. know, a lot of people go to school for eight years. <laughs> They're called doctors. Do we, yeah. do we still have that uh, soundbite or not? It's got to be somewhere. That's right? such a Hang good on, Let me bit. see if I can find that. Tommy boy. Sauce, so, what, what would you have done with eight years? Of- oh, dear God. Oh, God. I would have smoked so much. Oh, here it is. Things here it is. Frank and <laughs> gone to Did you hear I finally graduated? Yeah. yeah, and just a shade under a decade, too. All right. You know, a lot of people go to college for seven years. I know. They're called doctors. <laughs> well, you have a master's, though, don't you? I do have a master's. Okay, so yeah, then yeah, you, yeah. See, it's yeah. not like you're uh, eight years in and you're still mm-hmm. taking... That would be brutal. That would be brutal. <laughs> that would be brutal. No, I, I got the master's in six, and then last year I uh, I slowed down and did some non-degree seeking. Um, I took... Uh, it's, a, it's an interesting phrase. Yeah, some non-degree seeking graduate level classes. I took um, sexual pleasures and intimacy. Excuse and, me? Uh, uh, naturistic healing. Could yeah. you give the DNA. cliff notes to Sauce? <laughs> oh. Wow, they have that at the University of Minnesota. I don't they do. Need that. Yeah, they wow. do. Learned a lot. Uh, was Greg Doyle from the Indy Star in that class? <laughs> he should have been. Jeez. <laughs> What's the ratio of guys to girls in that class? How many trench like, coats are worn? I think in I was the only class. guy in that class. Yeah, <laughs> I think I was the only guy in that class. It was oh, advantage you though. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, it was also online, and it was you know you met one time, so it wasn't anything. Oh, you know, but oh, yeah. can you imagine the what dudes outside of Parker? Can you imagine yeah. the dudes that signed up for an online sex class? Rosie. Rosie. I'm, tra- I'm gra- graduating. No. Yeah. Okay, Mark. Yeah, calm down, Rosie. What a weirdo. <laughs> God. All right, guys. Your assignment this week is to go on this thing called Pornhub, and uh, you're going to have to like, do I'm some done. research. <laughs> Finish. <laughs> Ace, uh, aced that class. Yes. Interesting. Yeah, the nature class. It was um, that was an interesting one too. There was one uh, assignment where I had to go find a river. And I had to report what I saw in the river and any species that moved and how they moved. And uh, didn't really see a whole lot of fish swimming down the river, so I kind of kind of struggled in that class. But, uh, yeah, that was an interesting one. Look, I hate doing this because you're here and you're nice and you're from the University of Minnesota. I went to the University of Minnesota. Man, this college thing is a scam. <laughs> What a waste. Well, yeah, when I, you're I in your on, 10th year. I know he's on scholarship, but like, <laughs> if, you're, if you're paying to oh, go. I couldn't imagine. You're paying to go look at a river and go. Write down what you see. If you don't see any fish, just report back to me. Right. Just you make guys it do up. paper mache out there, too? And, and by the way, this class is uh, $4,500. <laughs> what? It's insane. Go look right. at a river for free. Right. All right. Water colors. All right, let's transition. Look, we don't uh, we don't get a lot of uh, deep runs in the NBA in this town, but we're looking at one this year. It looks like it's possible. The Wolves just had their second best uh, regular season in history, 56 or so wins. Almost had a shot at the number one seed. We uh, we end up falling to number three, and we're facing the Phoenix Suns. They're favored. The Suns are favored on DraftKings to win the series. It's going to be a tough test. Let's talk to Mike Inori about the uh, the matchup. Mike Inori is the assistant coach for the Minnesota Timberwolves and kind of a kind of a cult icon. Mike, uh, you are beloved because of your uh, in between quarters interviews on Bally Sports North. Everybody seems to love you. I think that, um, like I said, I always tell people it must be a slow day in sports if that's what uh, gets everybody going <laughs> on those halftime interviews. But, uh, no, they're, they're fun, and um, you try to keep it light a little bit and keep some people entertained. All right, this is a tough matchup. I know you guys are ready for the Suns, but uh, uh, what did you see on Sunday that you can change by Saturday? What, what do the Suns bring to the table that give this team specific problems? I think, number one, just the matchups in general. And what I mean by that is we play big, and we've been very good at it all year with Carl Anthony Towns and uh, and Rudy Gay both starting. And then they play Kevin Durant at the four. So that makes them somewhat small with his skill set. So I think we can move around some of the matchups, um, look at different matchups and different people on those guys. Um, that's helped us immensely. The other thing, too, is we have to make sure that um, we know that Booker and Durant are going to do what they do. It's very interesting. They both average – 27 points a piece and they both average 27 points in wins and losses so basically what that tells you is they're going to score and they're going to do what they do so that means we have to pay more attention to those guys such as the grayson allens who led the nba in three-point shooting and bradley beal who's averaged 25 points against us in the two games that he's played um 
in the three games that we've played overall this season. So looking at some of those matchups, that's the first thing they present. The second thing that they do a great job of is they're a very fast starting team, and they've outscored us over the course of three games by an average of 14 points in the first quarter, including the 44-22 to 22 that you saw at the end of the regular season here um, just last Sunday. So we got to make sure that out of the gate we got to be ready to – to meet their push that they try to do, and, and we should be ready for all that. Uh, Coach, what do you guys do about it? It seems to be that the Suns are the one team that kind of boxes up Anthony Edwards when he, so he can't drive to the basket and dominate like he has all year. What do they do differently that a lot of teams don't do to him? Basically, they just sell out for 48 minutes, and that sounds like a you know very blanket statement. But basically what they do is when anytime he's in pick and roll, they put two people on him. So the man that uh, who's ever defending the guy that sets the screen – They'll just basically blitz or trap and put two on him there. So that's what forces him to get off it, which is the right play, and then we should be able to get open shots behind it. And the other thing they do is when he catches on the wing and in isolation, they basically just – everybody calls it boxes and elbows. So, you know, right the paint, there's going to be two guys there on either side of the free throw line and two guys on either side of the lane down on the blocks. And so he's looking at a crowd. So what that means that we have to do is we have to help Ant – as far as get him in space, so maybe it's off of a pass-pass combination where he can go and catch, those type of things where you can get him downhill and he can attack before that defense is set. The other thing that, that we can look to do is, and we haven't been great at it this year, but we need to run more in transition because then if they're getting back and, and trying to get matched up, there's some gaps there that he can attack. And uh, But to do all that, number one, you got to get stops, and that's what's been, <laughs> been our problem against um, Phoenix in two of the three games. But um, we can do some things to get him into space so that he's always not looking at two guys on the ball and then another three in a triangle behind him. Uh, you talked earlier about how the Suns get off to a fast start. How can you slow that down? What did you see on tape and your scouting this week that you guys can attack them with and slow them down? I think it's a very good question. I think it's a two part. Number one, we got to take care of the basketball. We had 11 turnovers in the first quarter of that Sunday game. And anytime you turn it over, especially what they call live ball turnovers, where it's not a ball that's going out of bounds or a charge and they have to take it out of bounds, it's where bad pass or you get stripped on a drive and now it ends up to like an odd man rush. So it's a three on one or a two on one or just an empty layup. So number one, they, they thrive on those type of opportunities. And then the other thing that we can do is, I mean, it sounds silly, but we've got to be able to make shots. And when you make shots, now they're taking the ball out of bounds, so that slows them up. And then the last thing would be when the shot goes up, if you're not in a position to go to the offensive glass and you're above the break or above that three-point line out towards the middle of the floor, you've got to get back so we can set our half-court defense. And that's where they've really hurt us in those first quarters. I think they had, I don't know, eight or nine fast break points in the first quarter, and they ended up with like 13 for the game. And so even when you look at Sundays, we, we chip it down to about you know nine or ten, an opportunity to cut it down below those single digits, and you just spend so much time and energy doing that, we could just never get over the hump. But uh, we got to make sure number one we take care of the ball, number two we get back on misses, and then obviously anytime we can score the basketball, that helps us as well. So, Coach, you get, you guys basically have a full week to get ready for this game, and this is a team that has had your guys' number. How how do you guys and what do you guys do? psychologically with the players to get their minds right, to sort of flush everything everything that happened in the regular season and get ready for this first playoff game? You can go about it in different ways. It's funny because I think uh, it reminds you a little bit of, uh, I don't know if you, I'm sure you all remember, Lou Holtz, who was a Minnesota football coach up here, but I always laughed with him. Like by, They'd always talk about on Monday you were getting ready to play the greatest team that ever was assembled. By Tuesday it was a really good team. And then by Thursday, Friday, Saturday, there was no way you could lose to that team. So, in other words, I think there is some psychological to it because of the fact that, number one, we showed them what we did and what they did to us, <clears throat> excuse me, and then, you know, and why they beat us. Number two, you know, then we start showing them what we can do to, to counteract that and make sure we slow them down. And then the last thing is just to show them why we are going to win the series because we are going to do these things to exploit what they've done to us. The one advantage that I feel we do have is um, they're not going to make many adjustments, nor should they. I mean, they've, they've beat the heck out of us, for lack of a better term, these first three games. So there's some, a lot of adjustments that we can do. The other thing is going into Sunday – Win or lose that game, I mean, it was kind of written that, you know, D um, Dallas was not going to beat Oklahoma City, so we were going to be either the two or three seed. And if we would have won that game, we're the two, Phoenix most likely the seven, because New Orleans would have been six. And then if we lose, 
like we did, we know it's a 3-6. Point being, Phoenix was going to be the matchup, so we didn't want to show an awful lot if that type of makes sense. So there's some things that we can do that they haven't seen that hopefully will help us. And uh, as you know, just um, game one will be very, very important to get that one at home and then um, and be off and running in the series. Coach, obviously looking forward to the playoffs, but uh, we've been talking some NIL transfer portal up here. I'm kind of curious to get your take. Um, you know, now these guys are making all this money in college and NIL. Um, how do you think that kind of uh, transfers over to almost the rookie duties that, you know, guys have to kind of serve as they're coming into the NBA now that, uh, you know, they've maybe made six, seven hundred thousand dollars and now you kind of got to take a step back and, and be that rookie again. How do you think guys kind of uh, comprehend that? And do you think that it'll impact uh, relationships on NBA rosters? Uh, good question. I think it will impact. The only reason why I say that it will impact is because a lot of times it's, um, I, I mean, you see it across even the NBA. We've seen it in our in our daily lives. To me, when guys get money, um, and, and even in college, they get a little bit more money, you become more, your personality shows even more. You become bigger what you what you are. So my point is, if you're a, if you're a generous person, you're a good kid, and you got a little bit more money, then you become more generous. You're passing out more. If you if you got a chip on your shoulder, you're a little bit more arrogant, then you become more arrogant, like you're untouchable. So that will not bode well, the latter, for, for those kids that come in with that chip on their shoulder because you're walking into a, a team and there's usually only one or two rookies and and you're walking into a team of where there's going to be 15 to 16 veterans who've been through it and done it and there's a whole lot of alphas in that room that have been exactly where this young kid coming into is. It's not like he's the head dog anymore. So it will be a rude awakening if they're not, um, if they don't try to fit in as a, as a you know, as trying to, oppose their will or be disrespectful or arrogant. That's not a hazing thing. I mean, that's kind of gone down quite a bit in the, in the, um, in the NBA, but it's just different things like, Hey, you know, grab some, a veteran shoes or make sure you have donuts or you're carrying a, I don't know, a door of the Explorer backpack or something. So those type of things, I'm sure there'll be a little bit of pushback and the NIL obviously is not going to, it's not going to help that at all. So there's definitely going to be some, uh, one or two for Dag on sure that, uh, that don't fit in as well because of the NIL. All right, final question for uh, Mike Nori, Wolves assistant uh, coach. Uh, um, thanks for joining, by the way, of course. Uh, the game is 2.30 this Saturday. Uh, outside of maybe like a, a random MLK day or maybe a, a Christmas Day game, a, a 2.30 start is obviously an oddity. Give me the uh, the pros and cons of playing a game at 2.30 as opposed to uh, an evening game for a playoff series. Yeah, I um... Another good question. I think the biggest one that I'm I'm banking on is that's twelve thirty um, Phoenix time. So maybe they're not all awake yet <laughs> when, when we roll mm-hmm. the ball out. But uh, the one thing that it does do for sure is you're not sitting around and waiting all day, um, you know, until seven o'clock. So you know, and just and basically at that point, if we have a seven o'clock game, we'll have a a walk through at around ten o'clock to about eleven, and the guys will eat, go home, get their rest, and come back. So there won't be a walk through per se. We won't get them up in the morning before the the 2:30, it'll be more of a meet at the arena, which is not as big a deal because we do have the four days to prepare. So everything will be in game plan wise. Um, I think it's kind of an advantage. I do. I just think that um, the energy, the fresh, it'll be the first Western Conference playoff game. I think Orlando and Cleveland are before us at noon. But just with with all the energy, not only with the with the city, but the fans and the players, they'll be chomping at the bit to get going. And um, I actually like the 2:30 start, especially with the the week that we've had to prepare. It's not like we need the extra rest. We're coming off of a you know a game the night before or even two nights ago. So. Guys will be ready. We normally practice around 11 or 12 anyway, so their bodies are used to, to getting up and going at that time. So I do think that's the, um, the positive. The one negative then would just be that, again, 85 to 90% of your games are at 7 o'clock at night, and those guys have those routines. But it's affecting both teams. I'd much rather be at home than traveling and losing the, the two hours, you know, getting to the city here that Phoenix will have to on um, Friday night. But uh, so I think that it will be in more advantages for us if you just you can look at it all cut and dry all right michael we need this we need this series we need this win you guys gotta yes, figure this do. one out you gotta do this uh appreciate the time man good luck on saturday and beyond dude hey thank you so much for having me i really appreciate it you got it there's uh mike and nori assistant uh, head coach of the uh Minnesota Timberwolves. I, maybe not assistant head coach is that what it's called assistant coach i think it's just assistant coach i like those guys that are assistant head coaches yeah um, or associate head coaches. We have breaking NBA news. Is that right? Uh, Jimmy Butler is expected to be out several weeks with a right knee MCL. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's, the same, it's like Zion, right? I mean, whoever 
wins that game plays um, the is going to get smoked right? by the Celtics yeah. anyway. So it would have been a better series if Butler was in it, but it but, doesn't really yeah. matter. The Heat had a chance if Jimmy Butler was healthy because the Celtics are so unreliable. And the Heat, they, they have, they've they been there and done that before as the 8-1 to one matchup, but not with no Jimmy Butler. It's, it's over. over. It's yeah. all wrap. Yeah. Now it's time for... Headlines. Headlines brought to you by our friends at uh, Wolf River Electric. You can go solar with Wolf River Electric. Go solar. Get those panels. All right, here we go. Parker, I don't know if you know this bit. I just read headlines and you react. You can say whatever the hell you want. Just don't say the F word. Ready? <laughs> like me. Um, an eight-year-old was found driving a car in downtown St. Louis on Monday with his mother sleeping in the back seat. Jeez. St. Louis. Seems responsible. She was tired. Eight. Yeah. Kia boys. Eight years that's, old. That does, Would you rather have the eight-year-old in the back seat and the mom dr- sleeping while driving? Think about it. Yeah, yeah. that's just, not bad, Zach. How many eight-year-olds have long enough legs to get to the pedals? I mean, uh, Parker probably did, but yeah. you're like nine feet tall. Pasta knees. Pasta knees definitely did. Yeah. Uh, a woman in Indiana was arrested after calling 911 to complain that her drug dealer sold her a bad batch of meth. Reasonable complaint. We hear these all the time. Like that's the that's the negotiation. What's the word I'm looking for? Leverage the drug dealer has. What are you gonna do? Call the police? File a complaint at the Better Business Bureau. Correct. This woman did, which is what I do. That's the person that's doing mess. Yeah, correct. Most people want to live to be 90 years old or longer, but two thirds of people out there surveyed would take a shorter, healthier life. Over a longer one with more health issues. Correct. I think it's pretty obvious, right? Wouldn't you rather live to 80 but healthy than yeah. 95 but you're just falling apart the entire time? Yeah, correct. I don't know. Keep me out. Keep me on here as long as I can, bro. I'm not trying to die. Even if I'm just like a, a head in a jar like oh, Futurama. Yeah. yeah, baby. In a jar? <laughs> yeah, isn't that, isn't that Futurama? Oh, you ever seen oh Futurama? no, I thought you were talking about a product. A high school student in Ohio is going to miss out on her senior prom after she got suspended for bringing a bag of blank to school. A high school student in Ohio will miss out on her senior prom after getting suspended over bringing a bag of blank cocaine to school. Nerf guns. Dookie. We're going meth, crap, Nerf guns, and what did you say? Cocaine? Yeah. Oof, you guys were close. Corn chips. Wait, what? what? Wait, what? Uh, the snack was not permitted because a teacher was severely allergic to them, and there are signs detailing the rule, and parents and students did sign a form acknowledging it. Yeah. So the student signed the form and still brought corn chips to the school, and they are suspending her. That damn form. Yeah, What? Well, I was they, like, was she trying to, like, plant them in the teacher's lunch or something? Yeah. Who cares? Corn chips whale. So, yes, you and sir. I say this about twice a year on this show. We do? Yeah, we do. But if you haven't had Fritos in about nine months, you, you crack open a bag and you're like, why don't I get these yeah. all the time? Then yeah. your breath smells terrible, right? Yeah, you get corn chip so breath. Good, though. And the you're best. going, God dang it. And then it's about a calendar year and you go, I haven't had Fritos in a year. Yeah, they have them at the spot downstairs. They're so good. And I almost got them, but I'm like, ah. you, you flip that thing over. And I mean, not that it looks like I've looked at a lot of nutritional facts, <laughs> but they are horrific for you. Like, who cares? They're like 400 calories for a small bag of worth them. every calorie. They're so good. And the chili cheese the ones are oh, great oh, too. Yeah. Elite. Gross. Yeah, elite. elite. Gross. Or, or if you put them on top of some chili oh, cheese. Yeah. As long as you're the chili cooking. doesn't have beans in it. Yeah. I Parker, agree. you're uh, you're from a different generation, but I uh, hope and uh I'm going to cross my fingers. You've seen the original Willy Wonka, the one from yeah, the yeah, 70s. Yeah, yeah. Okay, course, gotcha. That's the OG. It's the of best course. one, and it's not even close. Cheer so up, Chal- Charlie. Chalamet was solid, but he's yeah. not my Wonka. Zacho? <laughs> Hashtag I not disagree. my Wonka. The only Wonka is Gene oh, Wilder. The point is, the kid who played Will or uh, Charlie in the original Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory, uh, Peter Ostrom was his name. He never did a movie before or after. Wow. Crazy. One, one hit wonder. Wow. Nailed it. Ended up being a veterinarian in New York. He's 66 and retired. Oh. He says he gets a royalty check every three months for Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. How much does uh, uh, Charlie, Peter Ostrom, get every three months for Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? What does he make every three months? Sauce, you go first. Well, it's weird because it's one of these bits that we've been that 
every time we do one of these, someone will say it. Now I'm going to be the guy to say it. It's mm-hmm. either like 16 cents or 30 grand. I'm going to say he gets fifteen dollars. Fifteen bucks mm. every three months. Parker. Ah, uh, let's go. I was the same deal. I don't know. You guys feel like you guys got the leg up on me here. You got some background knowledge of this. I- I'll go with the sixteen cents option. You're gonna go sixteen Not bad. cents, Zacho. I'm gonna go thirty grand and sixteen cents. Thirty car. grand and sixteen <laughs> cents. Kind of piggybacking sauce. And he piggybacked you. That's all right. Oh, man, you love piggybacking. Yes. Uh, Max, I'll go with, like, uh, somewhere kind of in the middle. Let's say, like, 300 300 bucks. Sauce, you guessed $15. Yeah. You were off by 50%. He makes $30? Uh, 10 He makes 10 bucks. Huh? 10% of, uh, or oh, five, 50% of 10 is 5 so you missed it by 5 bucks. Oh. Ten dollars. Ten bucks every three months he gets for Ten Willy bucks. Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. I mean, buy a Wonka bar. Yeah, what just a just rip one. Off. <laughs> I had a. You only need one. I had a substitute teacher who was in, I guess, one of the more popular episodes of Mash, um, and he would get a fifty dollar check like every three months and would take his wife out to dinner. Well, our guy Dave Ryan is in Jingle All the Way. His voice is right. I don't know. I think they turned, you know, I don't, I've never seen it either, but I no. think in one of the scenes, KDWB is on while they're driving to get the, the lightning man or whatever it's called. And he, he posts it, but he gets like 17 cents a year. That's pretty hot. Yeah. Uh, Quentin Tarantino is ditching the movie critic. That was supposed Why? to be his 10th and final film. So according to sources, he's not st- skipping his last film he's still gonna do one more but it's not gonna be this one he's gonna come up with a different idea really it's weird because yep. they just like within the last couple months announced all the can like casting and stuff like tom cruise was supposed to be in it i guess brad pitt was gonna be his character from once upon a time in hollywood mm-hmm. and all that so it seemed like it was pretty far along for him to just be like nah right i'm, I'm good i thought the same thing yesterday when i saw it i was like isn't this in like post-production yes not and maybe he's gonna maybe he's just going for the money thing and he's gonna do kill bill three and call it a day mm-hmm. has anybody ever seen his teeth i think he always just kind of does the Smile. He does. I don't know if I've ever seen Quentin Tarantino's <laughs> He does make that <laughs> yeah, face. Does. That's fair. He does. That's a good point. Uh, Brian Cox from Succession says Joaquin Phoenix was terrible in Napoleon. He said it was terrible. Really? Yeah. I ripped the hell out it. of it. I don't know. Max, yeah. didn't you see it? Uh, no. I I th- Hawk, Hawk ended did. up seeing Hawk it. I, I didn't. Hawk's review wasn't that great, which is always uh, that's, you know that's, an indictment on a sucks, movie. Yeah. So I didn't end up going to see it, but I wanted to. But yeah, I did, it did not get good reviews on uh, Joaquin's part, or uh, I believe that was a Ridley Scott bit. Uh, Parker Fox, does uh, Conan O'Brien do anything for you, or is that just a generational miss? Yeah, I mean, I just I know the name. Got it. It's, yeah, it's he turns it. sixty-one today. He's the goat. I would uh, highly recommend uh, diving into his new show. Not only is he sixty-one today, his new show Conan O'Brien Must Go debuts on Max HBO Max. Me? So oh. travel show. Oh, yeah. Can't wait, man. Did you see him on Hot Ones? I saw the clips that went viral. Yeah, he's, he's, like, he's been he's, viral for days now, like a, a whole badass. week. Yeah. Well, so he goes I've on, never seen that show. He goes on Hot Ones and pretty much kills it, right? He yeah. basically says, bring it on. Right. And then this weird just wave of positive Conan O'Brien stories just floods the internet for like 48 hours. Everybody just telling stories about how great Conan O'Brien is. Yeah. There was a guy that said he interned for Conan. As like a production assistant. He said there's like 20 or 25 production assistants for the summer. And he said it's pretty standard for you not to run into Conan. It's just, you don't work directly with him. Yeah. And the story was basically on day one or two when he was introducing himself to all of them for the summer. He shook one of their hands and was like, don't steal anything from me. You know, sarcastically, right? Yeah. And then four months later, he hadn't seen Conan, hadn't talked to him. They didn't form a friendship. All that stuff. And... At the goodbye meeting, he's saying goodbye to all of them, and he's shaking all their hands, and he, he stares the same kid right in the end. He goes, I know you stole from me. Brilliant. It was a four-month joke. Yeah, that's Just funny, waited though. four months to tell yeah. the kid, I know you stole from me. That's funny. It's like the Dumb and Dumber one. What yeah. You... God, I love Conan O'Brien. I will definitely be checking that out uh, either today or this weekend. Actually, I'm super busy today. I got to draft somebody in program password at one. Yeah. I got other stuff going on. Yeah. But this weekend, maybe. Uh, let's end on this. Last but not least, 
A, a person pretending to be Aaron Rodgers conned a gullible woman in Ohio. What? She thought she was talking to Aaron for months online. She was confident it was him because the profile picture had a photo of Aaron Rodgers wearing a Green Bay Packers hat. <laughs> and uh, he was, quote, talking personally about himself, even with details. She was so sure that he was legit that she gave Aaron Rodgers... Her driver's license number, her social security number, and bank account details. Oh, come on. <laughs> she got conned on something called Viber. Oh. A whoa. messaging app hey. called Viber. I'm not familiar with what Viber. What is that? Anybody know Viber? Viber? I don't know Viber. I'm about to know Viber. <laughs> V-I-B-E-R. I've never heard of that. That's hot. No. That's she's, hot. She's clearly <laughs> never heard of Monte Teo yeah. either. So. Yeah. It, says, it's, it says free and secure calls, not so secure. Where would a pack is well, at? She's not going to have to worry about other people scamming her while she's getting scammed. So that's, that's, that's that's a, a good, good point. Good point. Yeah, that's the bright side of it. Good point, Zacho. Parker, do you have class today? No, I took eight terms, so I'm, I'm just chilling for the rest of the semester. Man, it's good to be eight-year senior Parker Feels Fox. good. I might go to Al's breakfast. Who knows? Yeah, hell yeah, man. I Get joined Sauce's him, but... order. Yeah. That's why not that why much. Why can't you go to, go to no, breakfast no. with Parker? Yeah. I would. I got that bit with Lieber. Look, Greg Doyle clearly wants to be friends with Caitlin yeah. Clark. Why yeah. don't you try to be friends with Parker and take him out I'm to breakfast? I'm already friends with and, Parker. And, and how about I have you to pay? buy? It's NIL. Can I buy? If you want to be seen know. next to him, you have to use his name, image, and likeness. We can uh, We can do that. Uh, I can buy, yeah. That little pay it for. Yeah, I can't go today, though. I'm busy. Well, next time we'll go. We'll what do. We'll do what uh, do you have to do? I have three meetings today and a password draft. Three meetings. I doubt it. I'm moving and shaking, man. I got yeah. stuff going on. Well, at least they Where? contact you. Would you just take the kid to breakfast? Can't. You you're playing MLB the show, aren't you? You're you're I picking got my a video game. game over. Yeah. You're picking a video game over Parker and breakfast, aren't yeah, you? The only people I wouldn't pick a video game over are my wife and Muppet. Okay. It's not the first time. Uh, at some point, we're going to get you into play initials. But tomorrow, Brian O'Neill, Pro Bowl tackle of the Minnesota Vikings, makes his power trip and initials game debut at 815. We're back tomorrow, 530 to 9. Thanks to Parker Fox. Thanks to Mike Nori. Thanks to Ben Lieber. 9 to noon is next. Listen back to today's Power Trip Morning Show or to hear previous shows. Podcast us on the iHeartRadio app or KFAN.com. KFAN Total Traffic. From the Quick Trip Traffic Center, here's a look at the roads. They are ugly. 35W northbound, stop and go between 90th Street and 494. 35W southbound, cross town to 76. 694 westbound's jammed up between 35W and 252. 494 westbound. See. All you have to do is water and mow.